Hello, Sunshine fam. I would like to welcome you to Old Town San Diego State Historic Park. Welcome to Adventures with Chloe. I am Chloe. If you are new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button below. And I would love it if you would hit that like button and comment and share my videos with people that you think might be interested in some of my videos. Today I am out here in obviously San Diego, California. And welcome back to Adventures with Chloe. I've got plenty of videos to show you. This is just one of them. So normally it's sunny out here, but today it's pretty out, pretty overcast. A little bit chilly, which is why I'm wearing the jacket. But I wanted to show you around Old Town San Diego. And there's a lot to see here. So I brought my extra battery in case the battery dies on me. So there's a lot of little shops that you can shop at. A lot of Adobe, a lot of Hispanic and Spanish history here. I'm trying not to film people here. It's kind of hard to do that when I got buses in the way. Sorry about the bad camera work. Sorry about the bad camera work here. I'm just trying not to film people, but it's kind of hard because it's kind of busy out here. So, we've got all kinds of stuff going on here. So, here is the square. So, this is one of the more popular places. Here is a map of Old Town. So you can kind of see all the different places that they have, shopping, and on Saturdays they do, here's some of the shops and stuff that they have in restaurants. My favorite restaurant is over here, and I'll be showing that to you today. I'm trying to go kind of slow, but they do, on Saturdays they usually do, I don't know if they do it today, but on Saturdays what they do is... They do, they have some of the people dressed in period clothing from the 1800s, and they show you the crafts that they do, like pottery and blacksmith and um, weaving, that kind of thing. I don't know if they'll be doing that today, but I just wanted to show you around. This is a side that I haven't been to before. It's a little bit chilly today. So I'm just going to show you around Old Town here. We're coming up to the square. And there's a lot of haunted history here as well. So I'll be showing you some of those places as well. Lots of people with dogs around here. i got to watch my battery time. But I do have an extra battery, so... walk around here. At one point I will tell you the history of this place. I've got to look it up on my phone, but just for now I just wanted to walk you around and show you some of the places that there are here. Now I first heard about this place on Ghost Adventures and I will show you the area where if you saw that episode where Nick and Zach had their shot challenge and Zach Baggins got drunk. So that is, I think, right around the corner here. It is a little bit chilly here, so I'm trying to talk a little bit closer to the camera so you can hear me sorts of things to do here. Like I said, I don't know if the trades people are going to be out here today, but I'll go and look and see at the blacksmith area if the blacksmiths are here. i to keep an eye on my time and my battery. This is a massive cactus. <laughs> I 
would not want to be touching that. So here's the main square here. And I don't know if they actually have like plaques that tell about the history of this place. But I suppose what I could do, and of course we're right very close to Pacific Coast Highway, because that's where Old Town is at. So let me read you the history of this place here. Hopefully my battery won't die. So give me just a second here. Sorry, I gotta put you down again. I did this. <laughs> I did this on another video. Um, I'm not very well prepared today, sorry. Okay. Give me just a second, folks. Okay. Make sure that my battery's okay. Yep, so far so good. Okay. Here we go. All right. All right, so Old Town San Diego Historic Park is located in the Old Town neighborhood of San Diego, California. It's a state park protected historical park in San Diego. It commemorates the early days of the city of San Diego and includes many historic buildings from the period 1820 to 1870. The park was established in 18, or 1968, in 2005 and 2006, California State Parks listed, oh, I think it went up too far, oh, listed Old Town San Diego as the most visited state park in California. So there's many different places here that have a lot of historical value. One is the Whaley House which we will not go into. They won't allow filming in the Whaley House, and I don't have the money to um, to do the tour. I've been in the house many times, um, and I've captured some interesting sounds in there and pictures. And the other is the Cosmopolitan Hotel, which is right next door to me. Uh, the Whaley House is well known for Thomas Whaley built the house, and it was built on the old gallows where Yankee Jim was, was hanged. Now, up the street from the Whaley House is the oldest cemetery or graveyard in California, or at least in San Diego. Now, the difference between a graveyard and a cemetery is a graveyard no longer takes bodies and a cemetery does. And I learned that on the, um, on the ghost tour in Chicago at a, at a ghost con um, it, back in 2013, I want to say, when I was at Chicago Ghost Con. So I learned that on the ghost tour, the difference between a cemetery and a, and a, and a graveyard. So a little bit of facts for you there. So we're going to walk around. I'm going to show you the Cosmopolitan Hotel and show you where Nick and Zach had their shot challenge. And I'll show you the Bandini room. Bandini was very famous for his... Um, for his parties, and I can't remember what they call them, um, Fandangos. Uh, I think that's the Spanish word for it, but he was very famous for his parties, his Fandangos. And so let's go take a look at the Cosmopolitan Hotel. I thought my battery was gonna die here, but <laughs> I must have had a pretty good battery. But just in case, I might, you know, this is obviously gonna be an edited video because I'm sure the battery is not gonna last. Maybe we can't get into the Cosmopolitan because it's all roped off. But this is the Cosmopolitan Hotel. I guess we can't get in there. What the hey? Unless we can go up this way. But, I mean, I'll walk in front of it and kind of show you from here. I don't know, they must be doing some construction or something. Unless they've got the... They may have the doors closed. But... They also do ghost tours here. Let's see, yeah, they got the doors closed. Doggone. Okay, so if you are ever interested in ghost tours, here's all the information that you need about the ghost tours.
tours. So you can pause the video at this point and read all that. Okay, so right in this door here is the saloon. And it was right in here and through that window there, which I don't know if you'll be able to see much in there because of the glare of the window or the, the outside here, but that's where Nick and Zach had their shot challenge. It was right back in here. But apparently I can't get in there, which is a bummer. And then you can stay at the Cosmopolitan up on these top floors here. Now one of these rooms up here is very haunted and I think it's right around the corner. So, and then there's an old covered wagon here that brings you back to maybe Laura Ingalls Wilder days, 1800s. But apparently you can't get in there. I don't know why. Hi. So yeah, one of those rooms, I think it's up here, is haunted. Really haunted. And that's where Zach was falling all over himself. But you can stay here. I don't know how much the cost is. But... We're going to go to the blacksmith shop and see if the blacksmiths are doing their trade here. I don't want to film myself too much because then usually YouTube only captures like three, three still shots of, the, of my videos and it's usually my face. So I want to film as much off my face on these videos so that it'll capture a better picture for my thumbnail. Oh, maybe they are doing it. Oh, look at this. Some old wagons over here. There was also a large Jewish presence in Lewis Rose, in our Robinson Rose building. And, uh, you know, we had all of these different communities coming together, and those were the main areas that you know, some people had contention with. So I may be making assumptions and conclusions, but it might have been a uh, religious motivated person, but never proven. But that's part of our hidden history. If you get a chance, go and check out our museums. It's uh, open and uh, uh, all throughout. We have different, uh, different interpretive panels and some of our museums have staff that have a little bit of an insight. Uh, we are historians here, so we're able to talk about um, what, what we know about our art. But I'm here focusing on the iron that we have. And uh, this is just one of the ways that we can showcase the lifestyle of the 1800s and showcase what life is like. Now, if there's anything you'd like to see up close, or you have any questions, I'd love to answer that. And for you guys just coming in, welcome. Hi. Have you ever been to a blacksmith shop before? Uh, not this one. <laughs> oh, nice. I was here in 2015. Yeah, there you go. You've been to one, you've kind of been to them all. Yeah. <laughs> so, what we do here is we take iron or the black metal, and we shape it into something new or different. You can take a farrier's grasp, you can heat it up to 1,800 degrees and round it out. Make it into a more of a familiar shape. Eh, that kind of looks like a snake a little bit. Well, I can take it a step further. Take punches, make eyes, because at this temperature, it's soft as clay. You can really mold it and shape it and what we call forge it into different things. And so some of our blacksmiths here were able to make this. Yeah, isn't that neat? The same punch that we use uh, for this snake, we have it right here, and if you want, you can grab this punch real quick, you can place it into this piece, just give it a nice little push, that's good. That is the same punch that we use for the eyeball. Oh, okay. It gives us a good idea of, of how hard we need to hit it, uh, what the shape is going to look like, so that when we do it in the iron, it's permanent and it's the way that we want it. Because iron is soft as clay at 1,800 degrees, you can use it to practice. Now, do you all want to see uh, uh, how I can actually heat up the iron? Sure. We use uh, a little bit of chemistry here. We <laughs> take our fuel source, which is primarily carbon. Now, back in the 1800s, they used something called coal. This is uh, organic matter that was burnt, made into charcoal, and over time petrified. And so that's how we get coal and we extract it from the ground. But when you light this on fire, there's some things that burn off of it, these highly volatile inflammable gases, and it's kind of bad for you to smell. 
However, the fire is not as consistent. You know, it's, there's some more bits of sulfur here, more bits of magnesium here, so it's kind of inconsistent. However, once you burn it, in the center of your coal fire will be a hard porous lump that's continuing to burn the most consistent and hot fire. That is your coke base. So it's essentially, you can think of it as refined coal. We just burn the coal until it becomes this. And this is the fuel that we use today. Once we introduce our fuel source to a little bit of oxygen in our fire by pumping the bellows, if you hold out your hand, you'll be able to feel the air that we can pump into our uh, fire. So we use air in combination with our fuel source, our carbon. Now, something's in the air that we need specifically. the letter O, we breathe it, our trees make it. What is it? Oxygen. oxygen. A combination of oxygen and carbon allows us to produce heat. So when I pump my bellows for a little bit more, fuel once a bit. So when I pump my bellows, say first, last one, a reaction starts occurring. That oxygen bonds with the carbon. And I pump and pump, and it starts getting hotter and hotter. Every time I pump my bellows, about 100 degrees is added to this forge. And we can max out at about 3,000. If I continue, it's going to start getting brighter. We're going to start seeing flames come out of this coat base. There you go. There's starting to be The whole thing will start catching light. And as soon as it starts changing to that red and orange color, we'll know it's hot enough that we can put our iron in. Yeah. So I'm going to let that heat up for just a little bit. In the meantime, I would like you guys to try and bend this piece of iron. Show you how hard iron is originally. Ah, it's a little bit of a flex. I saw that. <laughs> there you go. Iron is strong. Ugh, you're not going to be able to do much. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of iron. I'm going to heat it up to about 1,800 degrees to when the iron actually starts changing color and turns into a bright orange. Now, we don't have a thermometer, so we need to rely on this color change to get an idea of how hot it is. So what I'm going to do is put it directly into the orange. Right here. And I'm going to pump those bellows. Pump that bellows. Remember, that bellow is just a two solid pieces of wood bounded by leather, so it's kind of like a lump. Blowing that oxygen right into the fire and providing more heat. So that reaction is really what's doing it. Now, if you want to see the inside of the bellows, we have it on that side of the wall over there. It's just that wooden frame. Okay guys, sorry that I had to cut that short, but my battery was, or the time was about to run out and then the, I had to change my battery as well. So again, another fountain right in front of the Fiesta del Reyes. Now I'm hearing some Mexican music in here, so I'm just going to walk in. I'm not going to talk. I'll just let you enjoy the sounds. Thank <laughs> you. 
from there is my favorite restaurant which is the Old Town Mexican Cafe. They make very fresh food. Pretty reasonably priced if you ask me for the amount of food they give you. Hi Bubby! <laughs> so I will show you the Whaley House next. The outside of it. We might be able to capture some spirits outside. Uh, apparently the spirits are not just inside the house, they're outside, and it's not just people. They have a dog and a cat. The dog is a terrier, and the dog's name is Dolly. And I don't think I ever got the name of the cat, but I have heard the cat in the house. And I didn't see a cat. There's no animals in the house, but I have heard the cat when I was here in 2012, and also when I was here in 2015. Silver Star and I saw or heard the cat in the kitchen area. So I will meet you back at the Whaley House. Okay, folks, we are at America's Most Haunted House, which is the Whaley Museum. This is a historical marker. Route 101. In here, here's some information about the house. Hi. That's okay. No, you're fine. I'm just making a video. You can see people are dressed in historical clothes. She was one of the people that works here. So you can pause the video at this point and read that. So the house was built in, in 1856 to 57. I will not be going into the house, but Mr. Chris Fleming had taken a picture of himself at this window, and I did that back in 2012. But back over there, that is the courthouse where a lot of trials took place. And they've got an upstairs which has a theater. This side is the theater show you that from across the street. There's a lot of stuff that happens in there. So you can walk around the grounds here. So let me know if you see anything. You might see some spirits out here. These are actual people. <laughs> but you might see some spirits out here. You might see some the dog and the cat. So let me know in the comments below if you see anything. Those are some. Those are real children. So this is the parlor on the bottom level, and that is one side. I think that might be one of the one of the rooms. So if you see anything in there, let me know. I am not seeing anything right now, but because there's a lot of glare from outside here. But you're not allowed to film inside the house. 
I think they said you can film into the house from outside. So if you see anybody up in those windows, let me know. This thing here almost looks like a face right there. It looks like a face. I know it's not, it's just a reflection from the trees, but I wanted to film this plaque on the side here. This talks about, oops, let's zoom that out a little bit, sorry about that. This is talks about Yankee Jim that was hanged. He was the last man hanged on this site in 1852, September 18th. And he is buried down the street, and I will show you that old cemetery as well, as long as I can keep the battery good. <laughs> so, it was said that Violet Whaley, which was the daughter, um, was very distraught because her husband had joined the military, and he left her. And so she came out back here, and from what I remember they said in 2012, she came, this used to be an outhouse. I think this is the building that used to be an outhouse. And she came into the outhouse and shot and killed herself. And the gun went down the hole. And back in 2012, I don't know if they ever found it, but back in 2012, they were gonna excavate this spot to see if they could find that actual gun that Violet Whaley killed herself at with. Now, I know this is a little bit uh, gruesome to be talking about, but this is part of the history. So they're saying that the gun, if they haven't found it yet, they're saying that the gun may be, I think, under this building here. And then this is, I think, the kitchen. I don't know if I'm allowed to film in there, but I'll try and do it from the side. So let me know if you see any spirits in there. Kind of hard to see with the glare, but that's the kitchen. And then we got some... Oh, you can see into the courthouse? Are you serious? I can't go in there, but I can sure film, from, film it from out here. Oh, this is amazing. So this is the courthouse in here. And it's said that that chandelier swings by itself and there is nothing above this floor this is the one this is the the one story side of the house so this talks about the buggy that's right next to me here but let me know if you see any spirits in there that it might be uh, watching a something just popped up on my screen like it's caught something sitting on there's something in there there is something in there it's it's popping up like right here so look right there and see if you see anything like you know how when you're focusing on a person's face those squares come up on your screen something keeps popping up right there that is cool now, I'm not seeing the chandelier move but maybe if I move this way you might be able to see, let's see if there's anybody up on the bench there. If something pops up on the bench. That would be freaking awesome. I'm going to have to go back and review this footage. Because, seriously, twice something popped up like something was sitting on that bench right there. Let's see if it pops up again. Spirits kind of tend to come and go really quickly. I'm not seeing anything right now, but it popped up like it was finding a person in there, but I didn't see anything on my screen. That's wild. That's wild. So here's the buggy. Historic horse buggy. For your safety, please keep off. So check out that buggy. That's pretty cool. And then this is the this is like an old jail cell, a holding cell, a Whaley House holding cell. So let me know if you see anything in here. Is there anybody in here? 
please show yourself to my camera. It'll be famous on YouTube. You probably have no idea what that is. <gasps> Something did pop up over here. Holy what? Can you show yourself again, please? This is how you do a haunted investigation. <laughs> and this is during the middle of the day. Something did pop up for a second, like those squares popped up for a second, like right over here. They're like, nope, I want out. <laughs> that is so cool. Let me see if I can capture anything in the... Let's zoom in here again and see if I can capture anything in the court courtroom again. I don't want to spend too much time here because I don't want to waste my entire battery at this place, but... Nothing's popping up. But that was really wild. Oh my gosh. That was cool. And then we've got some brochures here from different places around here. We got Free Map of San Diego, Kayak Caves, SeaWorld, Birch Aquarium, the Tramway. All kinds of outlet or all kinds of things here. Point Loma. You can actually go up to Point Loma and see all that stuff. There's information about the Midway, which is an aircraft carrier. I talked to you about that at, in a different video. Here's information. I don't know. I'm trying to get it as clear as I can. So if you want to pause the video at this point and read that. I'm going to just do one more quick look here. See if something pops up. Nothing's popping up here. This is wild while I was filming in here. Like, you know how on your camera the squares pop up around uh -huh. somebody's face? It popped up and there's nobody in there. No shit. It's kitchen. It's quiet. You guys can keep around. Hi. Yeah, so Thomas's kitchen is made out of wood because his kitchen was detachable. Worst case scenario is you're cooking breakfast one morning, you burn your house down, right? So what people would do is they created what's called a lean-to kitchen, very creatively named. It's a little lightweight structure. It leans to the side of the house, and it, you, it functions as a kitchen, right? It's big enough that you can house the cooking equipment, do what you need to, but it's lightweight enough that if it does cook, catch fire one day, Mrs. Whaley and the kids could drag it into the backyard. The kitchen itself would burn down, three walls and the roof. But the house itself is stained, right? And your cooking equipment is just sitting on the ground, so it's not like it drags with it, so you still have all that. It's just you didn't burn the rest of the house down. Pretty ingenious. Pretty smart. Ours is a replica that's a little more sturdy than Mrs. Whaley's original kitchen. Okay, but something just cool. popped up I over by the, uh, unless it was just focusing on that and bucket. The thing in Mr. Whaley's backyard, There's four squares four. that are popping up on this. Out. Yes, on this one. Have a holding cell in his backyard for there might be something there too. I don't know. Really the county court that is period. crazy. The county moves into this one story level. Okay. So right across the street here is my favorite restaurant. I will never eat at Taco Bell again. Is there anybody in the parlor? I don't see anybody. Is the shades are kind of, uh, the curtains are kind of thick, so. Anyway, enough about the Whaley House. Oh, I'm feeling dizzy all of a sudden. This is wild. Okay, so this is my favorite restaurant. It's literally right across the street from here. It's the Old Town Mexican Cafe. If you are ever in Old Town, you have to eat here. It is amazing food. Just absolutely amazing. So the next spot I'm going to take you is to the cemetery, which is right up the street here. So we will go there, and I'll see you up there in a minute. Those eight toilets, right? Maybe people were getting sick. When you head upstairs, you're gonna see a room that has a number of artifacts in it. They were found in an archeological dig of where that well used to be. Cool stuff. Um, and they, they just became a trash pit in later years. They threw broken things down there, and then uh, we dug them up years later, right? So well, it's good information about how these people used to live. Does anybody have any guesses for how many artifacts they found in that well? About 300? You got a guess? 
120? You guys are close. 80,648. So you're pretty close, pretty close. Bet nods, right? When you head upstairs, you're going to see a number of the better looking pieces. It's cool stuff. Make sure you check it out, right? Now, I uh, also do want to draw your attention to this window up here. Furthest on this second floor, furthest on this side of the wall, that is the window to the master bedroom. A lot of our ghost sightings do have to deal with that window, there, right? For decades, yes, told us that I should see a woman in all Victorian dress looking out of that far window there. Think that that is the spirit of young Violet Whaley that people are encountering. Yes, Violet Whaley. She's a daughter who did commit suicide here quite tragically as a young woman. Uh, she had a very rough go of things. Her husband, who she married when she was 19, ends up abandoning her just two months into the marriage, day before Valentine's Day. Oh. Yeah, it's awful. The day before Valentine's Day, she's his wife. It's kind of spirals from there. It's a huge scandal when she moves back to the home here, divorced. And the town is spread these terrible rumors about her. Can't escape it. Does end up committing suicide here quite tragically as well. One of the sadder stories here on the property. You'll get a much better view of that bedroom when you guys head on upstairs, right? But yes, if you'd like to follow me this way. You don't have too much fun. other things as well. Originally built to be a granary, they did store cranes in here, right? This room was also a Sunday school, college place, dairy, bar, courthouse, meeting hall, dance hall, restaurants were in here, schoolhouses, museums, tons of stuff, right? Lots of stuff in here in this room. Whole house you're going to see is kind of this way. Because Thomas Whaley, the businessman that he was, loved to make money out of his home. Rented it out a lot, also to few of his own businesses here as well. Such as his general store in the next room there. It's where he was sold goods and such to early San Diegans. Then upstairs, you're going to catch a glimpse of San Diego's very first commercial theater. Same idea, right? Rent some place out to a theater troupe, they turn it into a theater. It's cool stuff. Yeah, they have all sorts of weird stuff here in the home. Now, you'll see that theater is not very big, but even so, they were able to fit over 150 guests in there on opening night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, keep an eye out for that, 150 people. Now, is anyone here interested in the spirit skull? Like the ghosts and yeah. stuff. Yeah? Well, yeah? Of course you are! <laughs> We're all here, right? Now, we can't guarantee that you will have a paranormal experience here in the home, but I do have a few tips for you. You want to make sure that you remain open to it. If you guys feel anything odd, either physically or emotionally, don't just write it off. Also, use your senses. If you hear anything, see anything, taste! Well, not that one. It's a little bit dusty in here. No, I don't like anything, right? But smells. Few of those smells you may encounter. Lavender perfume. We associate that with Anna Whaley, mother of the house. Cigar smoke. We associate with Thomas Whaley, father of the home. Big cigar smoker he was. And then uh, carne asada. <laughs> oh, if you smell carne asada, that's just Old Town Mexican Cafe across the street, right? They're cooking all day. <laughs> Nothing to fear, guys, no evil spirits here. Anybody who still remains here in their life, this is simply their family home.
This curve is moving. Yes, any questions on anything? This curtain is moving. I don't know if it's because there's air going through. Yeah, I see it. Might be the wind. Uh, okay. We do have a few of the doors open right okay. now, so it kind of creates a wind tunnel. Um, it's yeah. picked up on something behind the desk there too. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Here I heard the cat meowing in here. Yeah. So cool. This is the first time I've ever been able to film in here. Like the last time I was here was 2015. They're like no filming, no. You can take pictures, but there's no filming and there's no video. There's no audio taping. I had the, I had my digital recorder in my bag and I picked up stuff here. Seriously. Yeah, you were over in the. Yeah, I heard you. She likes to hide under the table and like tuck on coattails. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Yeah, because my daughter and I were sitting right here and I was taking pictures in here and both of us heard the cat. My son was right behind me, he didn't hear anything. Yeah, yeah, I was in the in the hut. Yeah. I wish I would have brought my digital recorder with me. I really wish I would have brought my digital recorder with me. Every once in a while, it, like nobody will be there, but it'll pick up like the squares on my camera, like somebody's there. Oh, this used to be a bedroom right here. This, yeah, back in 2015 and 2012, this used to be a bedroom. They had it set up as a bedroom. There's the whole family. I just hope my battery doesn't die. <laughs> Yeah, this is where they would hang the people yes. at this area. Yeah. Is there anybody here? Can you show yourself, please? Show yourself to my camera, please. I would love to see you. Give me a sign you're here. Oh my god, look how tiny this ring is. I realize it's for a baby. Are you on the couch? Everything has changed in here. Up at the top of the stairs, please. Oh, and they've changed it up here, too. Okay, I need to keep an eye on my camera here. This is the room. Oh no, my battery's dying! No! This room and this room, I've always captured stuff in. This one and this one. This is where I saw the person sitting on the bed. Thomas, if you're in here, can you show yourself, please? I would love to see you. Now that I can film in here, but I gotta go through kind of quick. Because the battery might die on me. Please show yourself. Are you in here? 
are you in here? Where are you? Oh, Dolly, are you here? I'm not seeing anything in here. Maybe they're out eating at the Mexican cafe across the street. Okay, there's nothing in there that I can see. All right. This is Thomas Jr.'s room. They always change everything in this room all the time. There's a lot of dolly. Okay, that's a creepy doll in a baby crib. Yeah, the like squares are focusing in on the doll's face. Is there anyone in here that can... Uh, Oh, shoot! Alright. Dead really quick. It could be the spirits messing with my camera, though, too. I'm trying to get as much of the house as I can. Okay, guys, don't mess with my camera. Just at least let me film everything in here, please. Just went fo just went out of focus. Can you show yourself please? Violet, are you here? We're so sorry that your husband left you. I wish you would show yourself, please. Is there anybody over here? Whoa, it's really fuzzy. Camera keeps going fuzzy on me. That's true. That's, yeah. Violet, are you in here? Can you show yourself to me, please? Or Thomas? Can you rock that rocking chair? <gasps> Something's in here. Something is in this room, you guys. You guys, something's in this room. It keeps flashing down by the shoes. It keeps giving me the squares down by the shoes. It's like, maybe it's one of the dog or the cat, because it's on the floor. And, oh, it just gave me the squares all the way around. Cool. Like, like if you watch my screen, like the squares pop in once in a while. Like the corners. Oh. See, did you see that? Yeah. It's down by the shoes. That's so cool. Who's in here? Can you speak to me, please? You might not be able to hear it, but it'll be on my camera. Yeah. That's fantastic. Thank you for showing yourself. Can you show yourself again so we can see you? There it went. Wow. Yep. It's still showing up by those shoes. That's awesome. I am so glad my camera's working right now. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Is it Dolly? Something's down there because it keeps flashing by the shoes. And I know it wouldn't do that for objects. Mm. Like when I focused in on the creepy doll over there, then it focused on the doll's face. But mm. it's something right there by those shoes by the end of the bed. Interesting. That's cool. You see that? It yeah. keeps focusing in on that spot. Wow. That is so freaking cool. It's still over there. What is that? It's, look at it, it's staying there for a while. No, there's something on top of the shoe. What? Yeah, because <gasps> last picture, you can see the top of the shoe. This one. <gasps> oh my gosh, what? Let me see if I can focus in on that. Oh, now my battery's dying. Now my battery's dying again, no! Stop messing with my camera. Now it's on the bed. It flashed on the bed. My battery's gonna die. Now it's over here. It's moving around the room, whatever it is. It was over by the chair. Okay, we are at the El Campo Santo Santo Cemetery. 
Founded in 1849, another state historical mark landmark. So this is where Yankee Jim is, hang is buried. And here's a plaque that talks about it, so you can pause the video and read all that. And here's another plaque. It's starting to sprinkle. Just gonna film some of the things here. Now there are some graves here that were children. This is probably one of them here. And that's probably another one there. It's a little child. I'm just kind of keep going to keep quiet here to be respectful. So I'm just going to stop on each one. Hopefully you can see that through the glare. where you can find this cemetery. I'm not sure how good these pictures are because like I said it's there's glass in front of it so it might be pretty glary. Oh that's Anna Whaley. It's not a very big graveyard. Keep calling it the cemetery, but it's really not. Oh, I know one of these graves is Yankee Jim. A lot of them are not marked. I'm not sure where Yankee Jim is. Oh, here. This is Yankee Jim. If you can read that, let me see if we can zoom in on that a little bit. The writing is kind of small. So go ahead and pause the video and, and read that if you can. Oh, Yankee Jim. Indian baby. That was a hundred years before my my birth. Not the same day, but I'm gonna go back to Yankee Gems because I kind of want to read what it says on here. some protected graves. A lot of these are not marked at all. Fragile, do not climb. Rosa Cassidy, wife of Andrew Cassidy. Hmm. 
Here's the information about her, so pause the video. Let's see, maybe if I zoom in a little bit. Can you read that a little better now? There <laughs> you go, pause the video. Sad place. Looks like three people, four people buried here, maybe, or maybe this is just the memorial. 1781. Died in 1852. Oh. There's an actual person standing over there. That way. Oh, look at this. They made a cross out of bricks here. And it's interesting how they have the graves marked with these stones. This is an actual... Wow, look at this. I don't know if you can see that, but there's actually etching on there from Langford, Ireland, County of oh, Longford. Wow. There's a native of Ireland. Oh, gold miner. Interesting. Wow, look at this tree. That's creepy. John Walsh. Interesting. He's only 24. There's no way that that's the size of his body. No way. Lots of uh, graves over this way, too. Aw, a little girl. Rest in peace. I need a ghost. Put the lead little trinket stone here for her. Here's the information about her. Go ahead and pause the video. This one is really hard to read, but there is writing on that, too. I can't even read it. Jose, son of Jose, Jose G, son of Jose. I can't read all that because it's so worn. Look at somebody left a little toy down there for, for the baby. Interesting how they have, not, I mean, look at some of these houses up here. I would not want to be up on the hill like that, no way. And Marin, questionable about when they died. And here's the uh, picture. I'm not really looking at the camera, so... I'm not sure if I'm picking up any spirits. All these are people, real people. I've got these fences, but there's no markings on them. Age 20. If some of these people in these houses ever experience like paranormal activity like over here at night or something. This one was only four years old. Isn't that sad?
Look at the, the headstone does have writing on it, but it's so faded you can't even read it. So I'm sorry that the end of this video was kind of sad, but, uh, you know, we all live, we all die. Santiago, Arguello. This used to be downtown San Diego, actually, this whole area. Obviously not here, but this all used to be downtown San Diego. And... For those of you that are interested in coming to San Diego and you want to visit different places around town, there's a Old Town Trolley. It, usually, it starts here, but it drops you off at 11 different places, drops off and picks up. And it's called the Old Town Trolley. And um, it'll bring you over to Coronado, into downtown, drops you off at a couple hotels, picks you up from a couple hotels. And um, look at this car. Isn't that cool? That is a cool car. So this is one of the places that it picks you up and drops off yet. It um, goes to Balboa Park, which is where the zoo is at. Um, goes to Coronado, goes through Little Italy, drops you off at Little Italy, drops you off at Gas Lamp Quarter, Horton Plaza, which is, an out, which is what they call an outside mall. I've never been there. Um, I've been past there on the trolley, and like I said, a couple of hotels, the Marriott Marquis Marina is one of them, which is the one that I showed you in the um, Seaport Village video, uh, drops you off at Seaport Village, um, drops you off at two places on Coronado, one on the west side and one on the east side, and uh, it's a lot of fun to take those trolleys. So, if you're thinking of making a trip out here to San Diego, that would definitely be a thing to think about. They also have a seal tour that you pick up and drop off at Seaport Village as well. And it's an amphibious boat type thing. And what they do is they pick you up at Seaport Village and then drive you around over by Point Loma and go into the water and go over to these platforms where these sea lions are and they have all different kinds of birds there and you get to see the sea lions really close up um, I mean pretty much close enough that you could pet them not that I would suggest you do but um, so you could take the seal tour those costs a little bit of money but it's something worth doing while you're down here so you might want to check those out too and Google those informa that information. And so this has been Old Town San Diego. As I'm walking back, I'm just going to film some of these shops along the way here. You can see how busy that place is over there. Lots of restaurants here. And across the way here. Street, I think. There's a Cold Stone Creamery here. That's tacos. Lots of Mexican re restaurants in here, obviously. Got some clothing. Candy. All kinds of stuff. Tiles and stuff. Mexican tiles. But it is starting to sprinkle a little bit. And I've got a lot of outside uh, cafes here where you can sit outside and enjoy the beautiful weather. Not today so much, but there is my favorite restaurant, Old Town Mexican Cafe, which means we're coming up to the Whaley House. And you buy the tickets for the Whaley House. Apparently they do them right now outside the house, but usually you go in here to buy the tickets. So, I think I'm going to go in there and take a look around. Let's see, can I get the house over here? Maybe not. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to say thanks for joining me today at Old Town San Diego. Thanks for joining me on another Adventures with Chloe video. And I probably will not be going to Balboa Park today. Um, I'd have to go back to the hotel and 
recharge my batteries and then drive back down and that's a lot of gas and right now gas is up over five dollars a gallon um certain areas where i'm staying it's at four or something just under five dollars a gallon so um anyway so i hope you enjoyed this tour around old town i hope i hope you've enjoyed these adventures of chloe's videos around san diego and um I look forward to seeing you guys back at home. Of course, by the time you see this, I will be back home, but right now I'm still in San Diego. And I'll try to film the takeoff and landing from here to Arizona and then Arizona back to Minnesota, if I get a window seat. But that'll be a totally separate video. It will not be an Adventures of Chloe video. It's just gonna be a, a vlog video. So at this point i'm just going to go ahead and say thank you for joining me today i hope you guys all have a sunny day we'll see you on the next one